So today, I'm crossing off the top of my motorcycle wish list. Do you hear what I hear? <laughs> 20,000 RPM is a rare sound. It's like 5,000 more than a Formula One race car. Only the note's being sung by a 30 year old toy. <laughs> and it's day bought for a few thousand bucks and serviced by a dealership mechanic named Chad. It's just the coolest thing I ever heard. GP bikes rev this high, but you can't buy one because they cost two million dollars. That's not cool. <laughs> you know, street leader bikes can be had for 20 grand, but they only rev to 14,000 RPM and only at 170 kilometers an hour. And the last time I checked with a cop, that wasn't cool either. But in Japan in 1990, they actually made race bikes that you could use on the street. This is me hitting 20,000 RPM in a school zone. Uh, this is me pinging the red line in a drive through And here I'm lighting up the Christmas tree in traffic. I still can't believe this is all at legal speeds. Like, how is that possible? Oh, I figured it out eventually. And see, if you want your pistons to go up and down 20,000 times per minute, then they're gonna feel 7,500 Gs. Inertia will try to rip that engine apart, and the only affordable way to minimize it is to keep the pistons tiny. There are four of them in the CBR 250RR, each sweeping an area the size of a shot glass. And that's how it manages 20,000 RPM with a manageable 45 horsepower and 249 cc's. A quarter liter, or in the hands of Japanese engineers, a super response quarter. I'm a dick for mocking English, but it's not a joke. You see, at 20,000 RPM, each valve has to open 167 times every second. And it does take a super response to close them 167 times, 167 times, 167 times, with every movement precisely on time. And remember, it's a 34 millimeter stroke with 11 and a half to one compression. On top dead center, the space above each piston would be like the width of this ginger snap. And even a simple cam chain would stretch minutely off timing and allow the pistons to beat the valves to death. And hence the intricate gear-driven system. And the engine is like an orchestra. It's extremely complex, but when every part is perfect, it plays perfectly.
If I were a Swiss watchmaster, I'd take one look at that Honda and shoot myself. It's the fastest revving mass-produced motorcycle, but also known to run for 200,000 kilometers. And if you assume a middle 10,000 RPM and middling 60 kilometers an hour, that works out to 2 billion reliable revolutions. You know, all those cam gears, it explains the whining noise. Nothing can explain what happened at the end of that shoot. Do you hear that whine? It sounds like gear-driven cams, eh? The things to shoot, uh, I see a aluminum twin spar frame for rigidity. Gullwing swing arm, that'd be a cornering clearance thing. I see Nissan twin disc twin pot brakes and an adjustable mono shock. And the way this baby blade is hung, it'll embarrass every modern 300 in every way. And if every beginner started on one of these, there would be no other motorcycles. It's a race bike. a buddy of mine who was a teenager in Japan in 1990, he said all the cool kids street raced every day. And under 250ccs you were exempt from the biannual emissions, noise inspections, which street racers could neither pass nor afford. So you have this weird moment in time where manufacturers went to war with their 250s, updating yearly with top tech as if they were flagship superbikes. The result is this rare ride. And most motorcycles top out at 8,000 RPM, but this one won't even move my ass for less than that. It only really gets going at 14,000. So I'm tap dancing on that six speed close ratio gearbox. And my morning run to McDonald's becomes a Moto 3 race to McDonald's. That's. The best way I can sum it up, 250 four-cylinders are the coolest motorcycles ever, but from a time and space that they're never going to be made again. And I wish all our videos didn't end this way. Dude, look. Thank you.